go. All right, um, I need to talk for a minute about pour-ups and what we're going to do with the stone when we do the, the typical pour-ups. This is a model mold that's typically used by uh, the industry. This is not exactly the same as your alginate impression mold, but it simulates the same action. So we're going to go through and we're going to actually pour up some uh, different stone scenarios and I'm going to talk to you about what to do and what not to do. All right, first of all, let's go over here to the stone. You want to make sure that <clears throat> you make sure that you have a one-fourth cup measuring device and it doesn't really matter what kind of a bowl you use. Uh, you can use a smaller bowl. They have small green bowls and large green bowls. I chose a large green bowl. Uh, the larger ones I think are easier to work with as opposed to the smaller ones when you're starting out. But a one-fourth cup measurement, and this is one-fourth cup as well, they look a little bit different, just make sure that it's a quarter cup. Don't use the same dipping uh, or scooping uh, ones that are provided for you in the alginate. You don't want to use those, the clear plastic one, because it's not the right measurement for what you're going to be doing. What you want to do is you want to scoop up the stone. It doesn't matter if it's compacted or not. Most stone is compacted and comes compacted and then just level it off. And you are going to need two level scoops is what you're going to want to do for almost all your pour-ups. I don't think anybody will require or need more than that. So bring it over to the sink. You want to make sure that your water, when it's turned on, isn't flowing at a really, really high rate and you want to make sure that it's cold. If it's hot, it will set up a lot quicker. Even if it's room temperature or warm, it will set up a lot quicker. Uh, I'm going to turn it on low, and you want just a steady stream, like so. And what you're going to do is you're going to pass your bowl underneath the faucet as opposed to holding it underneath. Stone is pretty much the same as alginate. There isn't a whole lot of difference. When it comes to water, it's just a couple of drops, and it'll be too much. So what you want to do is you want to take your bowl and you want to pass it underneath the faucet and stir it until it gets to about the right consistency where you're not seeing a lot of white where the material has been thoroughly wetted. So we're going to try this a couple of times. So you pass it underneath, start to stir, and you continue to pass it underneath until you get enough moisture into the bowl and the mixture to go over to the stone vibrating table. I prefer my mixes a little bit drier than most, but as you can see I'm starting to turn it around and I think that's about right. You can see where there isn't a whole lot of white left. That's about the right consistency of what you want. Okay, let's go over to the table. Okay. Turn it on low and what you're going to do is you're going to stir the material around while it's on the vibrating table. Wipe it off your knife so you get any dry areas off your knife. And then, if you can see here from the top of the bowl, what I want you to do is I want you to cut through the material like so while you're pushing down on the bowl. And what this does is, if you cut through the material like so, it allows you to get the air bubbles to the top. You don't want to scoop it because what that does is that winds up putting air bubbles back into the mix. Make sure you cut through it like so to get the air bubbles out. You can shake it, lift it up and off the table if you prefer. And then what you want to do is you want to start filling your impression material. Now yours is going to be an Algen impression. This is just again a replica model of an impression. You start in the back molar region and you'll put a little bit of material on your knife. Not a whole lot and I don't want to see people globbing it in. You're going to add it towards the back molar on one side and you're going to touch your knife to the impression material or the impression and the impression is vibrating on the tabletop and that will vibrate the stone off of your spatula and into the impression. Now you can see how I've only done a quadrant there and I'm going to keep adding to this area and vibrating it around to fill all the voids. So I add to this area and then I can vibrate the material by turning the impression. I can vibrate the material all the way around. 
You see how I can manipulate that? Again, I'm still adding in the same spot. All the way around to where we can get the impression all the way filled up. And then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fill it all the way to the top. And level it off. Okay, turn off the vibrator. And then you're going to come over and just lay it down on the counter. Wait for it to set. It should take about 30 to 45 minutes before you get a real, real hard set and it won't scratch with your fingernail. And all the excess stone, you're going to want to come over here and just scoop it out of the bowl like so and put it in the trash can. And then come over underneath the sink and rinse it off. Okay, we'll show you in another segment what happens when you leave the stone in the bowl and it dries. Uh, the bowls are rubber so that you can crack the sides of the bowl or crack out the material. But this is by far the best way and the easiest way to clean up after when you're done, before the stone gets all over your knife and everything.